Hello everyone, Sachi, how are you guys doing? So yay, back from the break. I actually, well, it was going around that maybe we might head back to the reverie because of that whole tweak announcement from the last chapter. But now that it comes to be. In fact, after this chapter, that two-week plan is seeming less and less likely. No, honestly, after that ending, it's, it'd be surprising if they make it two days. An actual plot twist would be with you waiting to it before he goes after Kaido. Seriously. But let's not jump ahead of ourselves. It's a review. First, we have a jump cover. Whoa, Kaido is looking menacing here. I just love Luffy and Zoro crossing swords, both Kitetsus and Kaido in the background. Just so menacing. <laughs> I'm loving it. And the clothes spread we got. Kaido kind of went fashion cheap with the whole Tokyo girl thing. I mean, even Big Mom is looking stylish and Big Mom is Big Mom. We can't see Shirohoshi though. She's too big. Hey, some nice colorful eye candy for the boys. And some girls. On to the chapter. One Piece, chapter 921. Shuten Maru. So we start where they left off at the end of the last chapter, the announcement that they're going after Kaido in two weeks. The interesting takeaway is that Onigashima is just off the coast of Wano. It's an island that can actually be seen from the shore. There has been a lot of theories, especially from Greg, that Wano might be designed kind of like Japan, as in a series of islands and stuff, but maybe with this it might not be likely. We got some more information about this whole fire festival they're planning around. It seems Kaido is... The king of Wano, basically. He considers Kaido to be a wise king who protects his... Wow... Okay... <laughs> what? So he's an emperor in more ways than one. I mean, feudal Japan had their shoguns, their military leaders, but then they had their emperors that they still have to answer to. So on the day of the festival, the shogun goes to Origashima to pay homage to Kaido when he's actually just going there to drink booze and... Mac bitches. So, Sunny is expecting them to have an easy time, just beat up some drunken guys. We have seen Kaido drunk. He is, he's no picnic. And speaking of Sanji, it seems he has topped a lot of people's tolerance for his perfect as this chapter. And all towards Okiku. And mostly towards uh, Nami later. Can't blame for Nami later though. But Okiku. Okay, okay, um, Sanji, you don't want to know what happens to the last guy to pester her. She cut off his top knot. Okay, I don't think you care. He doesn't have a top knot, but still. <laughs> then again, Okiku is kind of being Sanji towards Kinemon. Kinemon actually has a wife. Osuru is his wife. That came out of... Wow, okay. <laughs> and knowing that, Okiku actually went there, hung out with her, and was probably just keeping an eye on her for him. Weird. Symbolized by two firebirds on top of Habuki's wife. Her. Okay, what's he talking about? So, paramount importance right now is to share out the code to all those who are willing to rebel against Kaido and Orochi. It's very confusing, I didn't get it, but probably because you need to be of one to get it, maybe? I don't know, but whatever. It tells of the time and location, they'll get it. Yeah, I'm confused with Luffy. And we already know that the allies will have a crystal moon on their ankles, so they just have to look out for that. In fact, that was kind of the main point of spreading out the straw hats around the capital. The Rojuro and Usopachi were just supposed to hang around and keep an eye for people with those signs on their ankles, but uh, Zoro already screwed the pooch. Yeah, we have no idea where he's headed. Usopp though has thrown in the crowd with his rug oil, so yeah, he's doing a good job. For Nosuke, it seems, is on a very important mission. They didn't just pair him up with that carpenter because he's a good craftsman. They need to get blueprints of Kaido's residence from the guy. Yeah. Frankie and blueprints again. As for Orobi, we all knew what she was doing, just getting closer to Orochi, kind of keeping an eye on their movement, and she's uh, doing good for herself. Sandy cannot wait to see what she looks like. I doubt he survived. You know, she's doing her job, and she's doing it fine. <laughs> and yeah, Tanya's a good cook, he just needs to do what he does, but uh, he came on women. <laughs> anyway, it seems they have a plan for Brooke to help secure food for them. And Nami can just go be a ninja. Cool. As for Chopper and Kara, they're just going to stick with Una Arashi. I mean, they just stick with the minks. They can't really blend in too easily. <laughs> anyway, it's time for disguises, and <laughs> I kind of like what Nami thought a Kanoichi would look like. <laughs> totally different from what uh, he gave her. Oda. Not complaining, but damn those legs up. <laughs> Yeah, I've been staring hard at that picture right for a bit for a while now. And yeah, two points about that. First up, Nami has spent an arc and a half in nothing but a bikini, so I don't really think she has what to complain about. Don't 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 shame me. And second, I'm kind of on Kinemon's camp here. She looks hot in that. But come on, Ninja Chapa just has to be the best. Come on, come on, come on. 
I'm on that keychain. Rupvo is weird. He's dressed in rags with arrows sticking out of him. I have a feeling he wants him to be a scarecrow on the farm. Let's face it, that would be a very ideal position for him. He would be in a position to steal food and no one can suspect a corpse of doing anything. So yeah, he'd probably be a scarecrow. We'll see. Anyway, Kimo calls forth a real Konoichi to guide Onami and yeah, that's not, um, yeah, that's not how they addressed. <laughs> and there she is, all covered up. Yeah. He deserves that smack. <laughs> he kind of deserves that stop, but I'm still on the camp of, wow, she's really hot in that. And Sanji, he's shell-shocked. I mean, this is the second time his perception has been shattered. Remember when he thought all mermaids were beautiful, then he met... Yeah. I mean, Kami eventually fixed that, but now with Kanochi once again, yeah, it's been ruined for him. <laughs> but anyway, Shinobu, she has a very Lola kind of uh, character design, so I guess you're just going to go with that for a while. Now, on top of just gathering allies, you actually absolutely have to find three particular samurai. Kawamatsu, Denjiro, and Ashura Doji. So yeah, that guy is still alive. And if the silhouette is anything to go by, one of the other two is probably the last retainer who didn't travel in time with them. Now we have to take note, this is another time that the plan has been completely revealed to Luffy and also audience, which means it's definitely not going to go as planned, obviously. Better keep an eye on Luffy though. <laughs> anyway, back at a Kobori town, my fear has come to fruition. I just knew Luffy giving them all that food would kind of make them a target. Granted, I thought they'd be a target for Jack, but now they became a target for Shuten Maru and his Atayama thieves. They're actually stealing from the Kobori people, come on. No, I actually thought in tomorrow would be kind of like the whole Robin Hood stick, steal from Kaido's men and give to people like then Okobori, but now he's actually stealing from them because now they have access, it seems. And man, what they mean, beating up these poor people, they just got to eat today after god knows how long. Anyway, we meet Shutamaru riding the giant pool and wow, that is one lazy fat fuck. What? This is him? And... Okay, Shutamaru is definitely Ashura Doji. They both have the same top knot. That weird shape of stuff. It's the same thing. It's him. And they have the same body weight. So it seems after Lord Odin and the Kozuki clan fell, he just went back to his old habits and was just terrorizing people. I'm kind of disappointed. Granted, maybe he's just completely lost faith. I mean, he did mention how the country no longer have any real men that samurai can follow. So obviously he did look up to Odin as the exemplar of a real man to follow. But since he fell and Kaido and Orochi messed everything up, he actually believes it, 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 that's it for the country. That's the end. So, you know, might as well just take what you can and survive for as long as you can. Even from poor people like these. I mean, he was about to kill that grandma. Wow, this seems I just bandits. Simply because she was saying she believes in Otoki's words. Come on. I mean, for a guy who looked up to Odin, he wouldn't even believe Odin's wife? Come on. Yeah, like I said, I'm kind of disappointed in him. Of course, all this depends on whether or not he is Ashura Doji. He is. It's him. The top. It's, it's just him. Might be wrong. Nah, it's him. Okay, I'm 90% sure it's him. Let's leave 10% for error. Anyway, before he could do the dastardly deed, some stuff is happening to his men. Jack is here! <laughs> Enter Jack the Drought. So finally, we meet him. I wonder how he got out of the ocean. But according to his title, he's now just... All-Star Jack. Why isn't he a calamity? I mean, did Jack get demoted the same way Snack did? Um, probably Cracker did? Um, probably Katakuri did? Okay, it just occurred to me Smoothie might be Big Mom's only sweet commander. Anyway, Jack is there. He's riding the land shark. He's chewing on Shuntamaru's men. It's definitely a sure doji. And he's asking where his story at Luffy is. I'll be honest, at this point I was like, we just met Shuntamaru and he's just going to be a hype machine for Lil Jack. Come on. <laughs> Okay, he cuts Jack. The dream is formidable. Wow. And now Shunten Maru actually injured him with his sword. But on the plus side, finally, we're getting some hype samurai. We're kind of seeing why they're a big deal elsewhere. I mean, for all the talk we've been having for years, why the Marines are afraid of Wano. Oh, those samurai, we don't know how strong they are. Oh, they have been kind of disappointing so far, but Shuntamaru just kind of showed us, wow, well, yeah, actual samurai mean business. Anyway, Jack shrugged that off and went right on to the battle, so it seems the implication that Jack is basically a sponge for punishment might be true. And Shuntamaru mentions something about he didn't die back then, no way he's going to be taken down by small fry like 
Jack. <laughs> yeah, Jack is small fry. But he said back then, the see me 20 years ago when the Kazuki clan was taken down, he was one of the chains, maybe. Again, Shuntomaru, definitely, Ashura Doji. But before this epic fight could go too long, uh, something interrupted again. Why? Why what? What's happening? Yeah, the sky was swirling. Even Jeff was like, holy shit, what's coming? <laughs> Back at the camp, Law was losing his shit because he knows what's coming. Yeah, the sky is going crazy and it spoke. Then we see it. It's a freaking dragon. Bring those brats to me. Right? That is Kaido. Holy shit, we are fighting the dragon. Kaido is a freaking dragon. And not that lame shit they fought up Punk Hazard. I mean, they killed it and ate it. This thing is huge and it changed the weather just by showing up. And he just showed up to tell Jack to bring those Brats to him. So yeah, Kaido is a very intimidating figure, obviously. And Oda is definitely taking inspiration from the same place Akira Toriyama did for Shenron the Dragon. I wonder if he's going to grant any wishes. I mean, obviously not, but okay, wow. Just that that panel is really menacing. You kind of feel it, and all of a sudden the question I'm getting from everywhere around the forums is, how the hell did Shanks fight that? And go to Maria Ford on skate to stop the war. Seriously. Oh, with one arm. Yeah, it's kind of putting the Yonko power level in perspective. I mean, Big Mom, when she gets mad, she changes the weather. And we've seen how she gets when she gets hungry. Kaido is doing all that. Blackbeard. How is Shanks standing with these guys? I and mean, he's just a normal dude with some really impressive hacky. So, yeah. Kind of have to reinforce Shanks to expect- Yeah, wow. <laughs> okay. And yeah, do you guys remember the first time we saw Kaido when he dropped down on Hawking's kid and Apu while they were planning taking on Shanks and this derailed the whole plan right there? Kind of getting a sense of deja vu here. Yeah, this is why I had- I'm having doubts about this two week thing panning out. Kaido just showed up. Either Luffy is going to be really stupid and try to fight him now or- Okay, how are they going to fight that thing? And yeah, let's come to that. He is a thing, according to Big Mom and God knows how many other people. The strongest creature in the world. Maybe he's not a human being at all. The prevailing theory is that he's an actual dragon that ate a human human fruit. Probably an Oni version. We see there's a normal version. Chop already ate that. There's a Buddhist version. We know who had that. Maybe there's an Oni version. Hence the whole Onishima thing and the whole Oni. Just... It's a theory and I'm kind of starting to believe it. And if by some miracle they do manage to defeat him, because, wow, how are they going to do it? So then I get why Momonosuke also accidentally ate that <laughs> devil fruit that turned him into a dragon. He'll be the benevolent dragon ruler that will take over. If they can beat this thing. It's, 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 wow, okay, wow. And let's face it, according to most legends, dragons are immortal. Hence why Kaido just can't die. And now we know how he got up to the sky to actually have that attempt. <laughs> Thing is, it's probably going to take a miracle for that two weeks to come without any, you know, <laughs> incidents. I don't see it happening because he, okay, let's just see what happens. Because wow, oh, that is really, they put up a high bar. Well, okay, wow. So yeah, this chapter, hell of an ending, great read, looking forward to the next one. So yeah, that was my review. What did you guys think about this chapter? Please let me know in the comments. If you like my videos, give a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more stuff. Maybe it was just not take the direct route. I mean, if he actually is a beast, you just need time to feed him a dungo, right? That might work, maybe. I kind of feel that won't work either. Wow, how are they going to do it? No idea. See you guys next time. Good morning.